Welcome back to Walking in the Parks with Scott Davidson and we're gonna let y'all know some things that are going on and one of those is jobs. Jobs? Jobs. We have jobs. They have, they have more We have openings. We have openings. Yes, uh, every year obviously we need some help. Well, throughout the year we need some help uh, with different programming and whatnot. I said it already. <laughs> Can we start over? Nope. Let's start over. Nope. Oh, okay. But during the summertime, we have a lot of more activities going on. Obviously, the pool's open. We, we need lifeguards, concession workers there, and the complex is up and running. And we right. have uh, baseball and softball games, so we need umpire, scorekeepers, and also concession help there. So, as our last program stated, uh, we're going to go through some of the job descriptions of possible employment opportunities via the Madison Parks Department. And you really need to think about this because you're not sitting behind a desk. You're outside, you're, it's where it's fun, you got kids going, laughing and playing. Yep. And, and you're making a difference. <clears throat> yes. You're being part of something that's very important. Oh yeah, makes a big difference yeah. with the kids. Absolutely. So uh, we're ready to go. And th this is a normal application. You get these down to the Brown Gym at the park office. They're not available online, so you got to come or send mom or dad or somebody to get an application. And on the back, it talks about the different positions. possibilities, different yeah. positions. And remember, last time I also said when you fill out what what you would like to do make sure you don't put any no. be specific about what you'd like to do for the parks department and put them in the order that you want them if you really want to do baseball that's yes. your main put that first correct and then go the least one is the last one correct so, so. Uh, here are seasonal positions that are available via the Madison Parks Department. I'll just read through it very quickly. One is a park aide, which helps with maintenance and upkeep of the Parks Department. Uh, you would be helping Mike Cosby, who's in charge of the fields at the Rucker Sports Complex, with getting the fields ready for games in a particular night or leading up to the games. And uh, some people don't realize that uh, there is a lot of work that goes in because those lines just don't appear. <laughs> No, and it doesn't get raked by itself. Yeah, and you'll get some training. Yeah, it doesn't get raked by itself. <laughs> you'll get some training and, and the like. So uh, some of the requirements, you got to be able to work outdoors, obviously. Um, spend prolonged periods of time bending, stretching, standing, and walking. Now, we're not going to, you know, make it too tough on you, but you got to be able to do a few things. And to be a park aide, you must be at least 16 years of age or older. Mm -hmm. Now, this is for kids or we can have some college students or even some adults if you're interested in being a park aide. Uh, that helps get the, field, get the fields ready. Or you can be co uh, concessions, which would work with a cashier. And that's pretty simple, uh, pretty self-explanatory. As long as you can count. you got to be able to count. <laughs> Hopefully the school systems are doing a good job of encouraging how to if count. If not, you take a calculator. Exactly. Uh, you must be at least 14 years of age or older to work in concessions. That's either at Crystal Beach Pool or at the Rucker Sports Complex. And at the complex, we have a front concession and a back concession. So right. uh, there are numerous opportunities up there. We're open five days a week at the complex. And obviously the pool is open seven days a week. So. Uh, figure out which one you want to do for concessions. You can indicate that on the application. So concessions. Also, lifeguards and swim instructors. This is a big one because obviously we have to have lifeguards for the pool to be open. Yes. And you can never have enough lifeguards. Uh, lifeguards have to have a certain certification. Uh, you no know, CPR, AED, and first aid. And there are classes you can take for this certification. Uh, Shelly Hamilton out at Southwestern offers some of those things. Or if you need more information about getting trying to get certified as a lifeguard or swim instructor, call the park office. And at 265-8308 and Dave or Kim can get you the information. And to be a lifeguard or a swim instructor, you have to be at least 16 years of age or older. Okay, And obviously, uh, swim instructors, they work outside the normal operating hours of the pool. Uh, pool hours are normally noon to 8. Swim instructions are in the mornings. Right. And if it's in June, the water's cold, <laughs> yeah. and uh, sometimes in the evenings. Uh, so be part and help make a difference in a, in a child's life. Be a swim instructor. If you don't want to be a lifeguard, you can be a swim instructor too. You don't have to be both, but uh, we need those folks to uh, fill those positions. And uh, E is, I don't know why it's listed last, because for me it's the most important. It's our youth officials and scorekeepers. Oh, you, you can't have those. You don't have any, uh, yeah. any sports. Yeah, you got to be able to spend prolonged time to either sitting, standing, or running uh, must be able to communicate with the public yes. in a nice way yes and I always tell our folks to kill them with kindness be knowledgeable of the sport if not we'll make you more knowledgeable uh, be able to accept criticism because sometimes oh. uh, Joe and Jane public think you got the score wrong or think you got the call wrong right. and they'll let you know and that's when the guys outside the fence which would be me and some others would try to encourage folks not to be so yes not positive how about that? Also, you must be able to keep accurate scoring. 
be able to punch buttons, and be able to enunciate names, announcing. Because what we do is we have two umpires on each field, right. and we have a scorekeeper and an announcer. So we have four eyes in the field, four eyes upstairs. And you're announcing kids' names because I learned at the Boys and Girls Club a long time ago, the most precious possession of anybody is a kid's name. And don't just assume because it's spelled Smith, it's pronounced Smith. Sometimes it can be different. So people get there on time or get there a little early, go through and make sure they know how to pronounce it. Right. Uh, and when they're doing the announcing the names, they can always, you know, when you ask what the name is and how it's spelled, it's not always right. They can always spell it the way it sounds. You know, you don't have to, your pa nobody's going to see your paper. Yep, but well, when I worked in radio, that's what I always wrote. I wrote yeah. it phonetically. Yes. yes. Anyway, to be an umpire or a scorekeeper or announcer, you must be at least 14 years of age or older. So to apply for any of these jobs, for the most part, you got to be at least 14 to work concessions or scorekeeper or be an umpire. A lifeguard, you have to be 16, and also to be a park aide, you got to be 16. Uh, and we go, there's a lot of kids that give back to the Parks Department by being involved as an umpire scorekeeper right. concessions and the reason they come back and give is because the previous umpires scorekeepers and announcers made a great impression on somebody and they want to come back and do it too so it's very yeah. critical that we get the right folks in the right spots to yes. help get the programs running so if you need more information about being any of these or being part of the Parks Department obviously again give us a call uh, track us down you can call my uh, city cell phone 493-9840 and we'll get you more information about being part of a very successful summer program, whether it's the Rucker Sports Complex or at the pool. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, that'll give several kids yep. something to do for the summer. And there'll be training, too. You don't come in, we don't just throw you out in the field and <laughs> then you go and you call balls and strike safes and out. There's some training that goes right. along. And we don't put you in a position, I, especially for our umpires, that they're not comfortable with. Right. Because we have rookie league minor league, major league. So as you become more and more skilled yeah, yeah. and more knowledgeable, you'll move up the ranks. Right. Uh, we won't throw you in the major league game behind the plate with the, the two best teams playing the very first game. No, we don't do that. We pair you up with a, a wily veteran right. because everybody that's a first year employee, we call them newbies. It's just something that I tell them. They're newbies because they're still learning. Right. And eventually our newbies become those wily veterans. And we've been blessed over the years to have some folks that stick with us three, four, five years and Aww. they they pass the torch to the next generation. So, And again, as I mentioned in our last program, the toughest part of this job is uh, telling some kids we don't have a spot for you. Right. Uh, making the decisions on who's going to who's going to work, who's not. So work. about how many spots do you end up filling every year? For umpires and scorekeepers who work directly with me, we normally hire 30 <gasps> wow. umpires. 30 scorekeepers. That's 60 kids. Yeah, normally. Uh, and wow. uh, some people can do both. They hire, fill both positions. So we do have some thoughts. Concessions, uh, there's a lot of people apply for concessions. And again, they, they get a crew of, I think, four, five, or six down at uh, Crystal Beach. And then the same number, six, seven, eight, or nine, or ten at the complex. And they rotate through. They don't work every night, right. obviously. And so it's you, about 15. Yeah. And you don't work every night as an umpire scorekeeper either. We try to share the wealth. Yes. Uh, and we find out at our, we have a staff meeting at the, nor, normally towards the end of April, to find out what your availability is. Is we give them a conflict sheet and there's 10 spots on there and I always tell them if you fill out all the 10 conflict sheets you probably need to find a job someplace else <laughs> because you're going to be gone but we do work around you know, there's some kids that do things in the summertime they they have maybe another job or right. they they play sports or they're in conditioning for sports coming up in the fall and we try to work around that too right. we because we we know there's other things going on besides park and rec well, it keeps them out of trouble exactly. if they're busy doing yeah. something. And it's rewarding. It is. I mean, they, I mean working with the little... they learn a skill set. Exactly. And uh, they learn to be on time and be punctual and work with Joe and Jane Public, like we mentioned before. And we public still, relations. Public relations. And, and we do that as adults. And right. they learn some skills that they'll carry on with them for a lo very long time. And they can use those anywhere. Whether Absolutely. Whether it's in a group of friends or it's at work or, Absolutely. you know, when you go to play. Yeah. You can say things a certain way and it either goes well or doesn't. Yeah, and we'll take care of you. We'll, like I said, we get you some training and uh, we put you in spots that we know that you're comfortable with and we're comfortable right. putting you in. So That's great. Yeah. Now, with all this, you have applications coming up because they have to fill out, not, not the employee part, but the actual athletes yes. have to fill out an application. Correct. And those are due, uh, what, the 27th of March 
for seven through 12 year olds. That's right. for baseball and softball. Uh, workouts are gonna start uh, March 30th for baseball, March 31st for softball. Then we'll have a draft, we'll form teams that are gonna start practicing. And in the meantime, once those teams are practicing, then that's when we start training our staff. And normally it's not me just doing the training, it's some of our Wiley veterans come back and help do some yes. of the training. So uh, you'll get probably three or four weeks of, uh, of maybe two or three times a week that we get together and do some training and get you ready for the season. So uh, again, if you're interested, please get involved. And, and moms and dads, don't forget to s sign up your youngsters. Spring breaks that uh, week of March yeah. 23rd, so it's okay to sign up early. Yeah. Yeah. If you if you don't sign up before spring break, you're probably going to be gone doing something. Yeah. When you come back, you're going to realize you didn't sign up. Of course, so spring breaks may be canceled anyway because of <laughs> certain things going on across the country and across the world, but we'll see. Yeah, you don't know. Uh, you never know. Yeah, We're <laughs> so, not in charge of that. So. But anyway, we're, we're kind of ignoring all that. We're sitting yes. a little too close, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway, so make sure you do that. Try to get those applications in, you know, ahead of time before spring break, and then you don't miss yes, it. Yes, that way you don't have to worry about it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now we have another interesting thing we're going to do, and it's and whatnot. And whatnot. <laughs> yes, and whatnot. It's, it, and I mentioned it earlier, it, it slips out. It slipped out in a very first program multiple times and you're not gonna believe this Debbie yes but you know occasionally folks need to go they go out and check out all the antique shops and the, the knickknack shops and that. everything you're not gonna believe this you are not gonna believe this I was at one of those particular shops and look what I found oh my god look what, what this bag it? says on it what not? We didn't know <laughs> what what nots were, but it says right here on the bag, this is a bag of what nots. I had to purchase it because this is a bag of what nots. It's just kind of a hodgepodge of everything. And we're talking hodgepodge, guys. Yeah. It's, it's a little hummingbird and a little Batman thing. So look, believe it or not, I've got a bag of what nots. I brought props today. Is you that okay? Did, yes. So yeah, so that's what whatnots are. We just kind of pour things it's in there. It's a hodgepodge. Yeah, it's a hodgepodge. Anything we want to bring up. Hodgepodge. Well, one the first thing I'm gonna bring up is I don't know how many people get this My Indiana Home magazine. Yeah. I get that. And there's a meander through Madison section in there. Yes. So I mean Madison is is very well publicized across the state. A lot it of is. folks come here for various reasons, and I just want to bring that up. So, uh, well, Madison's, history meets Madison here. Madison's kind of like that bag over there that says whatnots. Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's got, got something for everybody. Yes. It's not just antique shopping. Yeah. It's not just uh, water sports. It's yeah. you know, there's uh, so many different things here to do. Can you believe I found a bag that said no, whatnot? I can't. And I didn't write it on there. It was already on there. Well, I wouldn't put it past him, but no, I, I didn't did. do it. I know he didn't okay. do it. It's not his handwriting. <laughs> a couple so. things in the whatnot bag. Uh, we we host a pitch, hit, and run here. Major yes. League Baseball hitch, pitch, hit, and run. And I just want to throw the date out now because uh, you have to register online for this. This will be the eighth year that the Madison Park and Recreation Department has hosted the local competition for pitch hit and run. It's Major League Baseball. Oh, wow. Um, and it's going to be on Saturday, May the 2nd. And it's for kids uh, 7 through 14, I think it is. But you've got to register online. In the past, we've registered, oh. and it's not through us, it's through Major League Baseball. Right. Uh, in the past, we've had papers and everything where people register at the spot. Uh, and we've also hosted what they call a sectional competition for those that advance from the local to the sectional. And we'll right. probably host that again this year. And then they move on from the sectional to the team competition, which if they are first in the team competition, they move on are in the sectional to the team competition which is at Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati and we've been able to send a, a few people over there to compete so uh, mark your calendar pitch hit and run it's a free competition uh, this is the eighth year we've hosted it'll be on Saturday May the 2nd at May Rutgers Sports second. Complex and we'll try to get more details and information out we'll try to get into the coaches hands and yes. if you're involved with baseball softball or if you're not involved with baseball softball right. you can still be part of pitch hit and run and we'll, we'll try to run it here yes in, independently so that you don't have to look for it in a show, it'll yeah. actually pop up independently. So. Well, I'll have to get you some yeah. better information than just a post note like yeah. this. Also, one other thing I want to pass along is, you know, a lot of people love to watch high school basketball. Oh, yes. They love to follow, and they follow these star athletes from their freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, and some go on to play college ball, some go on to college but don't play, they play intramurals, but after college, some of these guys still play basketball. They go to Europe sometimes. Sometimes to Europe, or sometimes to the Madison Men's Basketball League. <laughs> yes. 
And it we kind of vicious. Yeah, well, it 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 it's some serious basketball. It is serious. And we host a spring league and a fall league. And the spring league is going on right now. We play on Sundays at the Brown Gym, and we've got a total of ten teams involved. Oh my! And there are some guys that. guys that you watched as high school athletes playing, and there's some guys that can still really play. Now there's other guys like. <laughs> I didn't play high school, but uh, I basically referee or spectate. But there's some guys, and there's some tremendous basketball being played. So if, if you're in town uh, April and the first part of May on Sundays, and there's some park, cars parked outside the Brown Gym, yes, there's men's basketball. We don't charge for you to come in. Come on in and see some of the guys that oh, formerly nice. starred on local teams. Not right. just Madison, not just Shaw, not just Southwestern. We got kids from Switzerland County, kids, guys from Switzerland County, from across the river. Uh, we're drawing in a lot of great talent from Austin yeah. and Scottsburg, and uh, there's hotbeds of talent all over the place. So if you're looking for some entertaining men's basketball, Come on down to the Brown Gym. You know, that would be good to take your young kids to because then they can watch these guys that are yeah. seasoned yeah. and they'll take time to talk to the kids yeah. because they're not rushing to one thing. And there's families, mom, you know, the wives and the kids come along. But for you, if you're looking for some basketball and not just college or NBA, Come on down and see some of the former local guys that you remember played high school ball playing oh, in our. That's great. It's it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh wow! All right, so I'll have come to try to make it down there. Yeah, for that. come on down for That'll that. That'll be so, fun. All right. So what's next? Uh, our thought for, for the, the day. day? Well, yeah. do, do you have a thought for the day? I actually did because I, I brought props today. <laughs> this is my second prop. <laughs> He's this, getting into this. Well, I'm telling yeah, you guys. Yeah, the, and this is a thought. It's not an original thought for me, but I've had this since I was in college. Oh, as long as you know where to go find the thoughts. It's yeah. all that matters. And this actually it sits in my garage at home. It's the barn at home. Right. And I keep it where the stereo is and everything. But this used to hang on my bulletin board in my college dorm room. Now, see what's cool about this is when he gets really old, he's yeah. going to know where to get the yeah, thoughts. Exactly. You know, he won't have them anymore. But, <laughs> yeah, but, I'm, I'm, okay. <laughs> but you know, now people paint these thoughts in signs. Oh, yeah. Back... When I was a college student, that, that wasn't a big thing yet. No. But people would print them on certain things, and then you would get them. So this is still the original paper that it came in. In the wrapper. Yeah. So our thought for the day, do I show it or do you want me to read it? No, you can show it. Okay. Well, unless you, do, I can you look at it. Let me, yeah, I'll, look, I'll read it first. Okay, this is our thought for the day. And again, this was in my college dorm room way back when, a few years ago. Forty years ago, Debbie, forty years ago. <laughs> Okay, here's the thought in here. It says right there, but I'll read it. It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Yes. That's a good thought, isn't it? Now, see, that's what your grandmother would say, and if you said something out of line, she'd smack you in the yeah, mouth, and she would say that. And maybe my grandmother <laughs> gave me this. I can't remember. Or my mom. She smacked you in the I mouth? Well, I've healed up since then. But, yeah, so I've had this forever, and it's in the original package. Yes. It's in the original paper, and there you go. See, you're ahead of the times. I well. <laughs> you were you were ahead of times. <laughs> Back in the middle of ages or something like that. So anyway, there's your thought for the day. So well, that is cool. Yeah. Well, do we have anything else we want to cover? Well, next time. Yes. Next time. I've already started doing a little research. You know, the Brown Memorial Gymnasium. Oh, I is, think that is the awesome is the building. home of the Madison Men's Basketball League. Basically, we do play some at Eel oh, yeah. It's also where the park office is located. The pickleball tournament. Pickleball is being played down there. Cheerleading Walkers, squad. cheerleading, basketball. Do you know how the Brown Gym got its name? Not anymore. Okay, just I, say no. I, I, just no, say I no. I did it one time. Just I, say no. But I don't remember. Just say no. I know. I don't remember. So next time. Will explain why the the name Brown Jim because people think Brown Jim is it because it's the color brown? No, no, and it does have a connection with Jay Graham Brown, who well, I'm not going to go too deep. <laughs> I was going to say he's telling it all, but okay. no, I'm not. But there's stuff out of Hanover College, yes, that has that name on it. There's stuff down in Louisville that has the brown name on it. So we're going to tie it all together in our next program. You're going to find oh. out why it's the Brown Memorial Gymnasium. I have to tell you a story. When we you're not going to... No, this is different. Okay. This oh, is the different, different, different one. Story. Not the Brown Gym. Okay. This is different. There was a picture at the Hanover College, and they didn't know who this little girl was. She was in a little white dress and had a camera hanging around her neck, and nobody knew who it was or why it was on the wall in the, in the main office. And during the time we were doing... Um, scanning of images for the library and the historical society. This little girl's picture kept coming up, and we finally found out who she was. Uh -oh. Yeah, 
it was Bonnie Lou Lowry and her dad was um, a photographer here in town so there's all kinds of pictures that he's got so we found out who she was found out she moved to Anderson Indiana mm -hmm. and she passed away a year ago I think so wow it, oh it was really cool so I go back to Hanover College and I say hey I know who the little girl is on the wall and I tell them about her and so now they're trying to figure out there you go how her picture ended up mm -hmm. on the wall they we think that her mother worked at the Hanover College so they're looking into that to see how her picture ended up on the wall Well, and I'm sure some people just take for granted for the brown gym it's called the brown gym but they don't know why it's right. called the brown gym right so we will we will delve into that next time I promise I've actually already got the research done but I, I was gonna say I don't <laughs> want to give everything away well, you're going to have to stay tuned yeah, and find to tune out back in. why it's called the Brown Gym That's and right. what the history is yeah. behind it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe even cover some about the flood. Why there's I, an odd rock on the wall. and why I, I'll mention the flood of 37. <laughs> I wasn't around then, but there are people that were that wrote notes down. Yes. Yeah. That would be so, cool. Yeah. All right. So well, a history of the Brown Gym. A little bit of history yes. of... Why it's called the Brown Memorial Gymnasium. All right. Now, well, that's what you need to remember now is get your applications yep. in. Try to do it before spring break yep. because you're going to be gone on spring break mm -hmm. and you might forget. So you want to get them done before that. And if you sign up before the deadline, you're guaranteed a spot. Yes. Afterwards, we'll try to work mm -hmm. in, but there's no guarantee and there might right. be an little extra fee. So we're yep. trying to save you money by getting you signed up early. Yes. And also, don't forget, by the end of this month, you're still saving money on pool passes. They're $40. Uh, through this month, so uh, they go to 50 starting on April 1. Right, and then all you kids and some of you young adults, some of the older adults, if you want a job with the Parks Department during the summer months, yep. go ahead and get those applications in because they're going to be filling up and you don't want to wait till the last minute and right. go, oh, I don't have a job. Exactly. We, we need yeah. your support and your help and uh, the more the merrier. I mean, we try to hire as many as we possibly can, but... Uh, There's um, a limit. There is a limit. There's there is a limit. A limit. Yeah. So, cool. Yeah. All right. You guys remember all that. Yeah, don't forget. And also, I want to wish Debbie a happy belated <laughs> birthday. She's 29 again. It's not belated. It's today. <laughs> no. Well, when this program airs, it'll be belated. Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll try to work really hard and get it out You're going to edit this part out, aren't you? <laughs> no, I'll, I'll leave it. I promise. <laughs> okay. Anyway, happy birthday to Thank you. you. In I the month of March. It. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Even though I am just 29. 29. Yeah. I hope you guys believe that. <laughs> well, we really appreciate our sponsors for making all this possible. And make sure you send in your questions, and we would love to address those and get those answered for you. And as always, we appreciate you watching. <laughs>